Easy, boy. Easy. Easy. That's a good boy. stash exposed.
doors. Locked. It's locked. The hell who did that? Then there's some seriously uncool shit going on up here tonight. I can't believe Josh is dead. I can't believe how he died. No, I, I mean, what if they were wrong? What? Maybe we should have checked the shed to see if it was really true. I, I don't know. There are some things that once you see them, you can never unsee them. Yeah, I guess, but some things you have to see for yourself. I'll take their word for it. Look! An axe. I feel better with an axe. Break the door down, will ya? Whoa, wait a second. We start smashing shit down, he's gonna hear us. Well, you got any better suggestions? I don't know. What about... Look! What? The window. That's great, Matt. I can just about fit my lip balm through that little slot. No, come on. You will never fit through there, big guy. I won't fit, but you will. Are you nuts? You're gonna shove my ass through that little hole? I've seen you slip into some pretty tight jeans, Em. Uh, excuse me? It's a talent. Think again, lughead. No can do. For one thing, that maniac is probably just sitting there under that window waiting to blend us into pina coladas. <sighs> okay, fine. Here it goes. I'm gonna huff, then I'm gonna... Shh, just do it! to Chris and Ash and Josh? He's got to know this is the only way back. I don't say that. Look, the cable car's all the way out there. Well, that's, I, I mean, that's not far, right? You, you can jump it? <laughs> I'm good, Em. But not that good. Flattered, though. Well, Matt, if you can't jump that, what are we going to do? I, I don't know. God, everything is, like, so busted up. I think they knew exactly what they were doing. Very friendly. Unfollow. Someone really did a number on this joint. Such a mess. Hey, look, this place was barely in working tower. condition before, and now? Hey, Magellan, maybe we should get the cable car working and take this show on the road, huh? Hey, there's 
there's got to be something we can do. All ears. Look at all this crap. There's got to be something useful in here, right? Great. No keys, no cable car. So, back to square one. <gasps> what about the fire tower on, on the map you found? What? I guess it's an option. Oh, maybe it has a radio or, or something. I mean, it, it would, wouldn't it? Probably, yeah. Matt, we gotta get to that radio! We can use the radio to call for help. Somebody's gotta pick up the signal. Oh, well, someone's learning to play by the rules. What? What rules? Rule number one, Emily is always right. Rule number two, nothing else matters because Emily is always right. Uh-huh. Magic. Come on down. We can totally get out here this way. You're all right. Yeah. Uh, thanks. Maybe um you should go first to protect me. Okay. Okay. Easy now. Almost. Almost. I'm feeling kind of faint. Don't look down. Whoa. Okay. Okay. Holy cannoli, thank God that's over. Yeah, for real. Safe spot. Hold up, wait it out. It, it'll be a little easier to figure this all out in the morning. As long as we don't hide in the lodge, that's where he expects us to go.
Some time after, the prospectors. Until a cave in trap. And driven mad. A year ago. I couldn't save you. I thought the police, like, swept the whole area. Well, it looks like they missed this. Step around here. Yes, Matt. Given the choice, I prefer not to spend my evening plummeting to my death off a snowy cliff top. out there Being creepy okay
use my clothes, really? Whichever one of you did this is off my Christmas list. Seriously, not cool, guys. Not cool at all. Chris? Josh? What the hell? Emily, this is really getting out of hand, okay? It was all very funny, haha. -ha. Look at Sam walking around in a towel, but now I just really want this to be over, all right? You had enough? supposed to hang out in a towel for the rest of the weekend. Towel it is then. Okay, if you were trying to freak me out, guess what? You succeeded.
Now, that was exciting, wasn't it? Well done. The game seems to be going very well. Yes. Oh, the good work. We did exploring the source of your fear. And you've just gone and used it for ill. Mm-hmm. Your overwhelming fear of failure. You'll turn it against these people who use it desperately want to torment. Has it been worth it? are off 69ing each other and who knows where Sam is. I think she's in the lodge. Why are we still talking about this? Let's go. Hey, look. Fire tower. <laughs> Matt, what is that? Uh, I don't know. I am Hayden Panettiere, and we are here at the studio recording Until Dawn. My name is Rami Malek, and I play Josh. My name is Megan Martin. My name is Brett Dalton. My name is Antonella Lentini, and I played Hannah and Beth. My name is Jordan Fisher, and I play the character Matthew, Matt for short. I'm Nicole Bloom, and I play Emily in the game. My name is Noah Fleiss. I am Galadriel Steinman, and I play Ashley. So, Until Dawn is the story of eight teenagers who uh, revisit this cabin in the woods about a year later after a, a really traumatic experience where I've lost two of my sisters, so coming and trying to get some closure in that respect. One of the things that Larry does really well is make these multi-layered characters, and I think for just the story in general, it's, it follows the quintessential horror film plot lines, but the characters are so unique in themselves, and I think that's very cool. Oh, I hope this was the right thing to do. What? You know, get everyone together on the anniversary. I mean, Josh seemed really pumped about us all doing something, didn't he? Yeah, no, he definitely did. I haven't seen him so excited about something in forever. Good, good. Sam, Sam and I have uh, a few things in common, such as being huge lovers of animals and she's a huge animal lover she's vegan she um, she is a pacifist I'm not quite sure if I'm gonna go as far as saying that I'm a pacifist but uh, she's spunky and cool I know that she I think is is made fun of a little bit by the rest of them who who think that her morals and her beliefs in that area are a little ridiculous and they don't agree with them, but she doesn't care. It doesn't stop her from being herself and that's something that I hope I have in common with her. You know, he definitely uh, can be depressed at some times and a bit of a loner, but he, he takes some solace in one of his sister's friends, Sam, played by Hayden Penetere, and uh, invites everybody back to the same house the next year to kind of find some closure. 
Jessica is she has a whole lot of personality. She is definitely the sort of mean girl character that, you know, at school, she she knows she's pretty, she knows that boys like her, and she's gonna use it to her advantage. He's got a big heart, and you can tell that that's very evident, especially how he treats his girlfriend, Emily, and, um, you know, he's, he's kind of a meathead, but in the best way possible. She really knows what she wants, and she manages to, to get that from whomever it is, whether it be Matt or Mike, you know, she's really driven, and I can definitely relate to that. My, my character is uh, Chris, and he is uh, what society might consider the nerd. Until Dawn is a game that's full of horror and one of the things we decided to do early on was to take a scientific approach to how scary it was. So we did experiments on people and we measured their responses to the game. We've created a test area, it's as close to a home setup as we can get it. We've recruited ordinary people to play the game and we've left them to play it on their own. The only difference is it's rigged with cameras and microphones that relay the data through to the next room where people are watching them play. <laughs> Bracelet here, we use for biometric testing. It measures the player's emotional response. It's called a galvanic response sensor. It makes contact with the user's skin and it measures the electrical conductivity across their skin. It's the same principle as an old-fashioned lie detector. When you're, when you're stressed, you sweat a little, very sensitive, and picks up tiny changes if the player is feeling anxious or scared. That data's fed back to a testing team, comes through as a graph. There's no point testing one or two people, you have to test a lot of people. Hey, watch your step. When we have a scare that's consistently has a measurable emotional response, then we knew it was good. If it didn't have that, it goes back to the team for improvement. The data doesn't tell us what's wrong with the scare, it only tells us if it's working or not. Wait, okay, so you hear that too, right? Josh. Here what? we have a chapter relatively early in the game. Weirdly regular. Not, not. Nothing regular about it. We have to create tension and anxiety in the player so they are ready to, to receive the scare. player time to recover to cool down to calm down and then start building the tension again be before we do the next scare hey uh, what hey what the hell Ooh, you just got mucked Adrenaline There's two things we found. One, one is we could look at the scares, analyse if our expected scares were working effectively. Were people shrieking and covering their hands or were they getting an emotional response from it? And being scientific about it means that we strip out people's opinions about whether things are working or not. We've got data and we look at the data. If it's working, we're happy with it. Really scary. <laughs> but scared and wanting to get away. <laughs> Hi, this is Lee Robinson, production designer on Until Dawn. The production design for Until Dawn started with the great teen horror script that sets the characters in a Canadian Winter Mountain Lodge, being a contemporary setting with visual clues derived from classic films of that genre, such as Hitchcock's Psycho and Stanley Kubrick's Shining. The storyboards are vital to the production design as it allows the designer to understand the scale of the environments to be made and the detail that would be seen to create the atmosphere of a horror. 
This took us into concepts that took these storyboards further, visualizing the world through the color palette, the lighting, tone, and the mood, and developing key locations such as the lodge, the cable car stations, the forests themselves, the wilderness. As you can see, the environment and atmosphere has changed quite a bit from warm and inviting to cold and threatening. The Millionaire's Mountain Lodge was a key example. It was designed to be made from nearby stone and timber, embedding it into the landscape, with a contrasting and contemporary interior, needing to be opulent and extravagant. We created dark and claustrophobic corridors with ominous and large open spaces, almost cathedral-like in size, and with huge structures to silhouette and dwarf the characters within providing a labyrinth to explore and wander. Each character was developed with a strong visual identity in mind, with contrasting colours, tones and silhouettes to identify them, each to have their own texture, pattern and shape, so that when they were lined up you could always identify them. The costume designs allowed a range of clothes that would suit them for the cold winter weather but also have an element of style and individualism, so that the audience could look at them and relate recognizing themselves within them. A lady would like to cuddle up with her man by a nice cozy fire bathed in atmospheric mood lighting. Right, it'll get plenty toasty once we're rubbing up against each other. My yeah. fire and mood lighting. Yes. Working with the lighting artists, we really brought the look and feel of the world together. And this required a thorough understanding of the visual language of teen horror. The key scene was where all the characters emerge out of the rear of the lodge chasing Hannah. A contrast is evident straight away from the exterior wilderness to the warmth of the lodge. The attention to character lighting here is through the bounce and rim lighting, accented colours and composition, creating characters that come from the dark into the light and back again with an emotional effect. Guys, there's someone outside. What the hell? What's going on? Where's my sister going? Oh, it's fine. She just can't take a joke. It was just a prank, Han. Hi, Larry. Hey, Graham. Hi, my name is Graham Resnick. I'm a filmmaker, writer, director, sound designer. And uh, I started working with Larry Fessenden about 10, 15 years ago through my friend Ty West, who I grew up with, and uh, I've done a lot of sound design with on his films. And uh, he was producing Ty's films at the time, and uh, Ty introduced me to Larry. Larry produced my first feature, and we've written together on several projects. My name is Larry Fesenden. I'm a filmmaker. I uh, 